Hello everyone, welcome to Pidharcast, the voice of the Apache Software Foundation. I am Swapnil Ammane and today with me I am having a very special guest, our very own Rich Bowen. So uh, Rich uh, is the Vice President of Apache Conferences and the former Board of Director and he has been involved in Apache for more than 25 years. So uh, if you talk about Apache, you will find Rich many places and it's really a pleasure to have you Rich. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and uh, in today's video, we will talk about the uh, ApacheCon. ApacheCon is official global conference series of Apache Software Foundation. And uh, Rich is a person who is uh, every time in the ApacheCon and he know every inside and out of ApacheCon. So thank you so much, Rich. And uh, uh, I would like thank to you. invite you to talk more about yourself so that our audience get to know more about yourself. Well, thank you, Swapnil. Thank you for this this chance to to talk about my passion. Um, I you you've said the highlights. Um, I've been I've been involved with the Apache Software Foundation from from the early days of the Apache Web Server. So before there was a foundation, I was I was working on the Apache Web Server, and that's that's where I got started at Apache, and so that's back in. 1994, that sort of time frame, 95. Um, and then I served for six years on the board of directors. Um, not, not six back to back. There were some breaks in there. Um, and that, that was a real, a real honor to be able to, to help lead the foundation. Um, but, uh, my involvement with ApacheCon goes back not all the way to the beginning, almost to the beginning. Um, in, in 2000, we did the first ApacheCon as part of the foundation, and that was in Orlando, Florida. And I spoke at that event, and during that experience, I sort of got involved in, in the planning of the event, and I've been with ApacheCon ever since. And, and what, what you see behind me is one of my, my prized possessions. This was actually created to hang above the stage at ApacheCon 1998 which is one of the two Apache cons that I missed. Um, and so this, this hangs in my office. It's, it's six feet long and it's the original Apache feather logo. Um, since then we have, we have the new logo, but this was the original one. And, uh, <clears throat> so this is kind of my Apache con wall, my badges from all the various Apache cons. That's why my office is so cluttered. But, uh, the, the reason that I'm passionate about ApacheCon is uh, that the Apache Software Foundation hosts somewhere between 200 and 300 projects, depending on how you count. And they're all amazing in their own ways. And Apache, the Apache Software Foundation has been at the forefront of inventing the world for 25 years, right. starting with the Apache web server um, and then Tomcat and Cocoon and, and uh, you know, just there are just so many projects. Groovy, the, the Internet of Things is being invented here. Um, uh, big Data is being invented here. And to be in the midst of that is just so exciting to see all these innovations and, and know that I had a small part in that, um, encouraging those communities to, to come together and and invent the future, and it's 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 just exciting. And I, I'm rambling a bit because this is something that I've been passionate about for for 20 years. Um, in my day job, I do work for Red Hat, um, and I am the community manager for the CentOS project, mm -hmm. which is a Linux distribution. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, encouraging open source projects to 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 thrive and grow and build community is something I've also been doing as my day job yeah. for about the last 15 years, in addition to doing it um, on a volunteer basis at Apache. So that's kind of, that's kind of who I am. This has been um, a driving force in my, in my career and in my hobby time, my whole adult life. So yeah, that's who I am. Oh, thanks so much for, for this details. And uh... Uh, I've been knowing Rich from a long time and he's so humble that I can keep speaking about him. So uh, thanks so much, Rich, for, for the, all the introduction. 
So uh, let's let's talk about the Apache Con. So we know uh, it's it's a conference from the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, can you please give some more uh, history? What exactly it is, and uh, what how it started, and how things are going? Yeah. Yeah. So back in 1998, mm -hmm. um, the World Wide Web was still a fairly new thing. People were starting to hear about it. You would see articles about it in the press, but it was still very focused on the geek community, the, the technical community. Um, your average person was just starting to discover the World Wide Web um, mm -hmm. and maybe use it for a few things. Um, but, but between 1997 and, you know, the early 2000s, there was this explosive growth in the web itself, but also in people's awareness of it. Right. And by 1998... It was obvious to many people that this was going to have a significant impact on the way we live, the way we work, the way we play, the way we talk to each other. And mm -hmm. the Apache web server was at the center of that. Um, the, the Apache web server was running, it depends how you count, 80, 90% of the web was running on the Apache web server. And... Mm -hmm businesses were starting to rely on this thing that was being built by um, a dozen people in their spare time. Right. And that then as today was of concern to businesses that were betting everything on this weird thing that, that these strangers were working on. And so around that time, um, we started talking, and I say we, I was not personally involved in these conversations, but we, the Apache community, started talking about making a formal entity, which became the Apache Software Foundation. And that's, that's 1998-1999 time frame. And one of the companies that was particularly interested in this um, was CNET, and they, they wanted to put on a conference to gather these enthusiasts together. And it was the, the the moment at which the Apache group, as we were called at the time, first met in person. And mm -hmm. that was in San Francisco in 1998, and that's where this feather comes from. Nice. Um, and at that time, of course, this was a conference about one software product. Um, and it was pretty well attended for, for a conference about one software product. So then you, you look at the, the next 20-some years where we grew from one project to 300 projects. And um, it becomes difficult to say what the conference is about, right? Because mm -hmm. in the early days, it was about web technology. And today, it's about everything. Um, right. The Apache Software Foundation has projects in literally every part of technology, um, from the big metal servers in your, your back office to your cell phone and and your your camera drone that's flying on Mars runs Apache software. And so we are very literally, and this is not an exaggeration, Apache software is on every computer you have ever used. And that sounds that sounds like hyperbole, but it's not. If you start digging, you will find Apache software on every computer you've ever used. And so what's our conference about? Well, that's hard to say. Um, and so about five years ago, we made a very intentional transition away from ApacheCon as one thing to it being a convention of project summits. Mm -hmm. And we approached all of our projects and we said, do you want to host your project summit at our venue? If so, tell us what content you want to run. And so mm -hmm. this is how the schedule is built. We approach these communities and we say, uh, you can use our tooling to gather your 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 uh, presentation proposals, mm -hmm. but craft your own schedule and tell me what it is and we'll run it. So mm -hmm. because of that, if you look at the ApacheCon schedule, you'll see certain things are always there. There's always a community track. Yeah. Um, there's always a uh, incubator track, which I expect we'll probably talk about later in this interview. But the other things in the conference change from year to year. Uh, big data is a huge deal right now and has been for, for five to ten years, and so there's a big data track. Um, mm -hmm. Other things like financial technology, fintech, they're a pretty new addition to ApacheCon because this wasn't 
it wasn't a big deal four years ago. And now it's a huge deal. This is something that's changing the world. And it's being invented at Apache, so we want this in our conference. And, uh, it, you know, when we talk about what the, what the schedule is, I'll highlight a number of these other tracks. But the schedule, the, the content changes from year to year based mm -hmm. on which projects are most enthusiastic and want to take advantage of our space. So that's yeah. what our conference is. It, it highlights all of the projects within the Apache Software Foundation. And it is a conference by the projects for the projects. The projects, the project communities craft their own schedule and tell us what content they want to, run, want to run and who they want to speak. Thank you so much, Rich, for this elaborative detail. It will really help our uh, audience to get more insight of the uh, ApacheCon. And love the way it started uh, with, with the history and uh, from there to such a, such a big platform for uh, for various projects and it, it is uh, very popular in the global community. People are waiting for Apache Khan. Cool. So uh, now let's move on to the next uh, topic, which is the uh, what is the schedule of Apache Khan look like? Means when when uh, when it started and and what was the plan? So um, a little bit of context here about why the schedule is the way it is. We have two events this year. One was focused on an, an Asia-Pacific Asia kind of an audience, and mm -hmm. so was focused on those time zones, and that was a couple of weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. ApacheCon, uh, ApacheCon at Home, as we call it, is the event that's focused on uh, Europe and the Americas and Africa time zones. Mm -hmm. And so all that to say, um, the event happens September 21st through 23rd, Mm -hmm. And the content starts at 1300 UTC mm -hmm. and runs to 2030 UTC each day. Although there are actually some evening activities mm -hmm. that happen after that, more, more social, um, unconference type content, mm -hmm. as well as just, uh, you know, come hang out in the hallway and talk to us. Mm -hmm. Um, so each day starts with keynotes and, um, I think we're going to highlight those a little bit later in the presentation, but each day starts with both our featured keynotes, mm -hmm. um, uh, and these are people that that, uh, that the program committee has tracked down because we think that they're interesting and have something to say to our community. Um, and then these are always followed by our sponsor keynotes, and mm -hmm. our sponsors make this happen and all of them all of our sponsors are deeply involved in one or more apache technologies and so it's not like they're just giving us product pitches they're not they never are they're talking about their involvement in the community and that's one of the things i particularly like about apache con is you you don't go to hear the sponsors to hear them try to sell you a product mm -hmm. you you talk to them because they are they're one of us they're part of our community and so the sponsor keynotes are usually almost always just as exciting and interesting as as our featured keynotes. So mm -hmm. that's that's kind of the the overall view of, of how the schedule fits together. It's three days long. Um, it starts, you know, mid afternoon in Europe, early morning on the west coast of the United States, and uh, then by the time we're done, it's it's fairly late in the evening in Europe, but it's it's. Uh, middle of the mm -hmm. afternoon in the west coast of the U.S. So it kind of works for our time zones. So, uh, and, I, and I hope uh, uh, following the uh, SF YouTube channel, uh, if, if you miss the uh, Apache Con Asia, don't worry. We uploaded all the videos on our official channel. So please feel free to check out a lot of amazing content Absolutely. there. So yeah, Rich, uh, thank you so much for this. Uh, I would like to know uh, more about the tracks included for the Apache Con. So uh, we know we have a huge list of tracks. So uh, can you please share some more details around that? All right. And this this event is, um, I, I, I guess it's assumed because it's this year, this event is entirely online. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have really have a limit on the number of tracks. And so it can get a little bit overwhelming. But here's the list of of projects and project communities that we're featuring. Um, we've got the API and microservice track, which mm -hmm. is focused on projects that are in, in that space of serving microservices and accessible through an API. Mm -hmm. We have the big data portion of the conference is actually three separate tracks. 
Um, we have one that's focused on the ozone project and related communities. Mm -hmm. We have the SQL, no SQL, uh, focused on sort of the, the data storage aspect of big data. And then we have streaming and stream processing, which is a third uh, area of big interest in the big data community. Cassandra has their own track. They're they're a, a huge project right now. Um, yeah. it, it's interesting if if you're not involved in this community, you're probably unaware of it. People are either completely um, immersed in it or they're unaware of it. It's it's just yeah. fascinating because it's this huge community. Um, and then we have the community track, and and I, I particularly want to highlight this because Apache. It's a home for projects, but it's also a philosophy, and that philosophy is discussed and highlighted in the community track and this is this is where we talk about how we do what we do and why we do what we do and so this is the track that's always of most interest to me personally um, got some great content in there content delivery is a track around uh, things like uh, proxying and caching the traffic server project the traffic control project mm -hmm. content management is about projects that where you actually handle and curate your content on the back end. Mm -hmm. Federated data um, is there's there's about a half dozen projects that are in this space. Finteract and fintech. Uh, I mentioned earlier, um, money's becoming digital. That's a gross oversimplification of this of this track, um, and and there's also a lot of important social content in here about how. Financial technology is so important in the developing world. Um, geospatial is kind of um, one of the tracks that I geek out a lot about. Um, a lot of these projects come from NASA and, and other mm -hmm. uh, a lot uh, a lot of other uh, space and geospatial type industries. Um, Groovy is focused specifically on the Groovy project. Integration is about the projects like CAMEL that, that take multiple projects and kind of hap, help them talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Internet of Things is, of course, something that is big in tech news lately. Observability is about metrics and monitoring and observing how your software is operating. Mm -hmm. Search has been a core portion of our, of our uh, conference forever. Um, this is projects like Solar and Lucene. Mm -hmm. that that drive uh, internet search engines but also um, search on on all scales from from micro from micro to to macro um, the tomcat track tomcat is is the second project that was at the Apache software foundation mm -hmm. and is central to how the the web works it's another one of these projects where if you're not involved in it you may be unaware of it mm -hmm. of how important it is right. Then we've got two other tracks that, that uh, require a little bit more explanation. One is the incubator track. Um, for those that are not aware of how the software Apache Software Foundation works, projects come into the, pro into the foundation via the incubator. And mm -hmm. this is where we train a community how to work in the Apache way. Mm -hmm. And so this track highlights projects that are still within that incubator this doesn't mean that they're immature or uninteresting projects. It just means that that's where they are in their life cycle. Um, some of these projects are a decade old, but they're just coming to the foundation, while other projects are just in their infancy. So it's a really exciting place to look to see the future very in a very real sense. Mm -hmm. And then the, the last track that I want to mention, we call the highlights track. And um, I... I, I don't want to imply that it's and the other stuff. Uh, Apache is home to, I keep saying this, 300 projects. They can't all have their own track. Mm -hmm. But they're all worth talking about, um, even if they can't form an entire track with their content. And that, this is where we put these other projects mm -hmm. that have exciting things to talk about. And so if you look for the highlights track, you'll see some of these projects. And that's, that's the full list of tracks um, there will be a test later, of course. Um, I know that's overwhelming. It's just so much content. Cool. I, that's, a, that's a big list. And uh, so uh, we'll put all these details in, 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 uh, in the video description. So uh, you can uh, choose the uh, track of your like. Uh, and uh, 
And yeah, and uh, uh, regarding the community track, we uh, we also had uh, a great interview with Sharon Foga. Uh, she's the community, uh, uh, she's the chair for the uh, community track. Uh, so please do visit if you are interested in uh, looking how the open source communities are managed and how uh, we are managing such a big community of uh, open source uh, uh, users, developers, and such a uh, big community who are related with the open source project. So cool. Uh, thanks, Rich. That was really a, a, a perfect uh, uh, explanation of what Apache Tracks uh, all about. So thanks for, for uh, sharing your thoughts on this. Cool. So uh, this brings me to the next questions. There is a lot of track. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I know there is a call for presentation. Then then people select the tracks. And then I will, I'm really interested in how uh, uh, behind the scenes story work for the Apache Con. What's really happened, and how you, uh, the team, collaborate to uh, make this event happen? So, can you please tell us a little bit about it? So, I'll start with a little story from history. Um, in the old days, and I, this is really up until probably 2006, even maybe 2007, the planning committee would actually meet somewhere physically and print out all of the talk submissions and lay them out on a conference table and argue about them. And um, this was both a lot of fun and incredibly frustrating. Um, if you can imagine all the way at the beginning when we were selecting the, the, the conference schedule mm -hmm. and we were only dealing with one or perhaps two or three projects, um, I, as an expert in the field, could go in there and say, these are the talks and these are the ones we should have. Now that we're 300 projects, <laughs> no one person can do that. Right. And so um, what we do is each one of these tracks has a track chair, mm -hmm. and that track chair is responsible for their content. I don't know anything about Solar and Lucene, and it would be foolish for me to select the conference content around that project. Right. And so we have an individual that's responsible for that, and then they form a small team around them to review and select the content mm -hmm. and all of this happens asynchronously online um, and I and my my core team um, coordinate this via email on the planners mailing list mm -hmm. now the planners mailing list is a public list mm -hmm. and anyone can join that mm -hmm. and typically it's people from within the project communities that join that but we also have people from other, you know, people from the companies, the sponsor companies, we have people on there from the press, we have a whole manner of people on there that can raise concerns and express interest or just sit and listen. Um, and so this is all, it's all done asynchronously. And then once these schedules are formed, I, I collect them. Um, my colleague, Brian Prophet puts together the actual schedule and posts it on the website. Mm -hmm. Um, we have folks that handle the sponsor relations. Uh, uh, Ruth Seely and Daniel Ruggieri speak directly to the, to the sponsors and handle the contracts and that side of it, so I don't have to think about that. Um, in normal years, we'll have somebody else that deals with the venue, uh, making sure we have the room, the spaces we need, the meals that we need, the, the accommodations for attendees, that's something that we did not have to deal with this year, but that's a major aspect of, of handling any major conference. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot, of, a lot of respect for the people that handle that aspect of it because I don't want to. Um, and so all of this to say that this is a huge volunteer effort and people step up to do the individual parts of it. And then my job as the vice president of events is to simply coordinate that mm -hmm. and... Uh, while everyone else does all the hard work, and then I get to take credit for it. No, but but seriously, um, there's there's just so many people involved in this that that help make this happen, and and it's it's always kind of a marvel to me that we manage to pull it off year after year so successfully. Right, and and definitely uh, a lot of the people are helping us, and you have been always there for us uh, in every aspect of Apache Council. So we're really thankful to you for this. And uh, cool. So, uh, so there, there, there are various volunteers because uh, uh, if you talk about open source, we can uh, 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 contribute to code, to documents, by reporting bug. 
So if somebody uh, volunteer would like to contribute to Apache Con and they would like to help the team, so what are the different areas where they can contribute and how they can uh, reach you? As you as you mentioned, there is a planner list. So can you please share uh, what are the opportunities and how can a volunteer reach out to the community for a contribution? So if somebody wants to volunteer to help Apache Con happen, they do need to join the mailing list. Mm -hmm. um, because that that way they won't miss any of the context and also if you're off working on your own you'll miss the fact that somebody else is working on the same thing and you need to coordinate right. but the the places where people can help are um they they change over the life cycle of the event at the very beginning there's uh content creation creating the website creating the event-specific graphics that we'll use for promotion, mm -hmm. um, creating stuff like the, uh, the slide template that people will use to present their content. Mm -hmm. We still need somebody to do that, by the way. So right. if you, if you want to get involved, that's a place. Throughout the entire process, there's promotion. Mm -hmm. And promotion happens on several different levels. Mm -hmm. There is the tell the whole world. There is the social media aspect. There is tell your company. There mm -hmm. is tell your project community. And each one of these requires a very different approach. If you're approaching your employer and saying, hey, Red Hat, can you, can you sponsor this event? That's a different type of interaction from saying to your project community, we're looking for somebody to give a presentation on mm -hmm. how you integrate these two aspects of our technology. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're the person that should give that talk. Um, please, will you step up and, and submit a, a presentation? Mm -hmm. And these are very different levels of, of personal interaction. Um, during the direct lead up to the event, we need to get people to, to buy tickets and show up. And so again, that's approaching your, your colleagues, your friends, your people in the project community Mm -hmm. And then also sort of the more broad, tell the whole world on social media, mm -hmm. write blog posts. Mm -hmm. During the event, we need people to be friendly. We need people to be there at the event to help people find their way to the rooms. Mm -hmm. And this is both, you know, literally in the physical context, but also figuratively when you're on the conference platform, you've attended online events, they're confusing Right. And you need somebody to say, this is the button that you click to go to the talk that you're interested in. And mm -hmm. this is how you participate in the event. And this is how you ask questions. Um, you need somebody to be there to say, here's how you get your camera working. That's a big deal in online events. Um, right. So during the event itself, my main job is tech support. Um, <laughs> and then after the event... We need people to help process videos and post those both on YouTube, but also in the individual project communities. Um, because uh, ApacheCon is, it's about community building, but it's also about education. And mm -hmm. so everything we do at Apache is free for the public good. This content that we're creating is a major asset of the foundation, and we want to make sure that it gets propagated out there into the world and is used for educational purposes. Mm -hmm. Education has always been a central point of this event. Mm -hmm. um, what else am I missing? There's, there's just so many things around putting on an event that, that require volunteer effort. Um, one of the big differences between ApacheCon and Apache Solar, or you know any other pro Apache project, is that Apache projects do not have a a leader per se. They don't have somebody that is the overall leader calling all the shots who you have to respond to. It's a collaborative effort and everybody has an equal voice. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that when you're planning an event right. because I have to deal with vendors. I have mm -hmm. to deal with sponsors. I have to deal with uh, venues mm -hmm. and we have to have somebody that can be the final word on these things. Right. And so these two communities feel different. So ApacheCon is very collaborative, but at the end of the day, I'm going to make the decisions and pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big difference between these two types of collaborative effort. Um, it's sort of 
all of the stuff at if you're looking at the higher level governance, we call all of this operations. These are the parts of the project yeah. where you do have to have one person in charge calling the shots because we have to pay bills and we have to file tax documents and all this sort of stuff. So that's that's my role in that project. But I try really hard to make everything else under that collaborative and make it available for volunteers. Um, when volunteers don't step up, I have to do it. So mm -hmm. I, I have a real incentive to, to make those things um, available for volunteers to participate. Nice, and yeah, and as you mentioned, if, if no volunteer, you are the person. So uh, in my journey with Apache, I, I, I really literally seen you wearing multiple hats and changing them across. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I get to see that. And uh, yeah, thanks for, uh, uh, yeah, thank, you, thank you so much for all these uh, details. And uh, uh, if you're watching this video, one, one quick help that you can do for us is to uh, spread the awareness of the Apache Con. Please feel free to share across your network. Cool. So uh, this brings to me uh, my next question around the uh, keynotes. So uh, can, can you please share some details that what are the keynotes that our audience can expect and what, what's a general idea about it? All right. So I, I mentioned keynotes are the first thing every morning. Mm -hmm. And so these, these keynotes will be at 1300 UTC on mm -hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of that week. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to start the week with Ashley Wolf, and mm -hmm. she is an engineer at GitHub, and she will be talking about the, in her, her title is the Inclusive Community Imperative. And I, I'm not going to read you her abstract, but what she's talking about is, uh, and her subtitle is, where do the next 50 million developers come from? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, this is something that, that we're very, uh, very engaged with at Apache, um, we grew out of the early roots of open source, and um, a lot of those people that joined open source in those days, to be blunt, they look like me. They're, they're uh, older white men. And what we need are more people from India, more people from Africa, more people from South America, people that don't look like me. And uh, I, I'm getting off on a bit of a tangent because this is something I'm really passionate about, and this is something that, that Ashley is going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, um, we always we always kind of have this uh, this desire to have one of our own speak to you from mm -hmm. from the keynote, and so I'm really excited to say that our Wednesday keynote will be Mark Cox, and Mark has been involved with the Apache Software Foundation from day zero. He's one of the original Apache group, and his focus has always been on security. Mm -hmm. um, in the early days of the internet, nobody cared about security because we're all friends. We trust each other. <laughs> right. You know, that's not true anymore. It wasn't true then either, for what it's worth. But um, at Apache, we produce software for the public good. And part of that is ensuring that it is secure and you can trust us in your data center. Mm -hmm. And Mark is going to talk about how we do that, how we ensure across 300 projects Mm -hmm. That if it says Apache on the label, you know you can trust it in your data center. Right. And then on Thursday, um, another thing that I try really hard to do with keynotes is to bring somebody in from somewhere else. Not somebody that's from free software, somebody that's from somewhere else. Because we have so much to learn from the rest of the world. We think we have to invent everything ourselves, and it's just not true. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have solved these problems elsewhere. Um, so we saw an article in um, a, an academic journal from the Wilson Center and New York University Research about open hardware. Now, clearly they're close to us in philosophy, but they're also very different in how they look because not everybody can build a chip in their home office. Mm -hmm. And so Allison Parker and Michael Weinberg will be talking to us about how open hardware works mm -hmm. and... Also, in this time that we're in, open hardware has been incredibly important to the effort to, to uh, fight the COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be talking about that aspect of their research. Mm -hmm. So there's never enough room for the keynotes that we want to run. Um, and and I'm, I'm just really excited about these ones that we have because they're, they're just 
touching on such important parts of why we do what we do. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and the variety uh, we are having is such an amazing man uh, uh, in the keynote. So uh, uh, good to hear that. Uh, cool. So, uh, great. Apart from the keynote is, uh, uh, speakers, uh, would you like to highlight any, any particular talk? Because you, you mentioned a lot of track. Uh, yeah. I, I would I'd like to know some highlighting tracks which you like maybe or so that it, it uh, might sound interesting to our audience as well. And I'm, I'm glad you asked me this question ahead of time because this is always a really difficult question to answer because we've got, we've got I, I forget the numbers, but last year we had almost 200 presentations and picking out a few is, is it's impossible, but, but here's, my, here's my, uh, my top five that I have picked. Mm -hmm. um, the first one that I picked, um, and it's not just because you're interviewing me, but uh, Swapnil will be giving a talk about the Apache local community effort. And um, this ties in very directly to what I was talking about with Ashley's keynote. Where do we find the next generation of developers? Well, you have to do that on a face-to-face -face individual basis. You can't just pull up a sign that says, come help us. You have to talk to people, and that happens in local communities. And Swapnil has started this effort to create local communities um, that, that look a lot like the old uh, Linux users groups from the 90s. Mm -hmm. And they talk about Apache as a whole, but many of them focus on individual technologies that are important in that particular community or, or region. So um, that's one talk. Apache Local Community Present and Beyond is a talk that I would encourage everyone to, to uh, look for, either live or watch the video afterwards thank you so much uh, i would like to take a moment and and really uh thank you so much for for the for your help in uh, establishing all the process i remember when we started this discussion uh, your inputs were really really helpful for for me uh, and it really uh defined the foundation for the apache local community so so thanks so much for mentoring and guiding uh, every spec on that so thank you so much all right i'm humbled um I mentioned earlier that the community track is where most of my focus is. This is what, what I am passionate about. So my second talk that I want to highlight is also from the community track. It's titled The Apache Way, The What and The Why. And this will be presented by Jim Jagielski. Um, Jim, is, uh, Jim is many things. Jim is one of the original members of the Apache group. So he's been around from the beginning. He wrote a lot of the bylaws. He wrote... Um, the story of Apache. He's been with us from the beginning. He served on the board of directors for 19 years. So when he talks about how Apache does things, he is the expert in the world on this. And so if you want to learn about, like it says in the, in the title, the what and the why, um, the what you can read anywhere. The why is something that Jim has a unique insight on. Mm -hmm. because he was there fighting for the why back when it wasn't obvious that open source was going to win. Um, so I, I, I really value his perspective on this. I encourage you to attend this talk. Mm -hmm. the, next, uh, the next thing I want to highlight is something from the FinTech track. It's called The State of the Project and the State of the Industry. Mm -hmm. it, the speaker is James Daly. And if you're not aware of FinTech, this is the talk that you should attend to get an overview if you're not aware of fintech, you should be, because this is going to shape the world economy for the coming generation. And, um, you know, you may think of fintech as that, that weird Bitcoin thing, but it's so much more than that. Right. Um, things like microloans have changed the way that Africa does business and, you know, to... I, I'm, I'm from Africa. I grew up in East Africa. I'm passionate about um, homegrown technology in the developing world that doesn't rely on the West for, for handouts. Mm -hmm. And fintech is, is where that's happening on the street. So go to James's talk. All right. The next one is enabling 
Mars exploration with A-H-T-S-E. And I, I have to admit that I don't know anything about this, and I will be attending the talk myself. Mm -hmm. um, earlier this year, I had a pull request accepted into a piece of software that's now running on Mars. And to me, that is just the coolest thing, you know, to be able to say that sentence, my software runs on Mars. Um, it's pretty cool. And 100% of the computers on Mars run Apache software. Um, Dr. Lucian Plesha will be talking about this and Apache's role in the software that's running on those on those computers on Mars. It's just, it, it's Almost. just cool. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing that I want to highlight is uh, Dave Fisher's talk, Hatching the Clutch, A Guide to the Apache Incubator. Mm -hmm. um, this is of interest to projects that are considering going to the Apache Software Foundation or any other software foundation. If your, if your software project has grown past the I'm running it on my machine and me and my buddy are hacking on it stage, then you might consider taking it to a foundation. Apache is not the only answer to that. We think it's the best one, but, you know, it may not be a fit for you, but understanding how the incubator works is critical if you're considering going to a foundation because onboarding your project into a foundation is hard work. Mm -hmm. It's not something that just happens. It's hard. It's it's annoying at times, mm -hmm. but it's something that you might want to do for the health of your project. So come to Dave's talk. He's been involved with the incubator almost from the beginning. He may be from the beginning. I'm not entirely sure. Um, the incubator has been around for more than a decade, and it's how projects join the foundation. So I don't want to shortchange anybody else, but those are the five talks that I want to highlight that you should absolutely attend and that I will be attending. Super. That, that, this is an amazing list, and the variety which you choose is simply great. It, it really uh, covers the various aspects of Apache and some of the super cool things we uh, do at Apache. So thanks, Rich. Uh, uh, I really like the, your list, uh, not, not because you included me. It's really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for, for this. So if somebody would like to register for the ApacheCon, uh, can you please share these steps how uh, to register for the Apache Con? Well, I'm not going to read you a URL. Um, what you should do is go to apachecon.com, mm -hmm. click on the event, mm -hmm. and then click on register. Um, we will be using the Hopin platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you attended our event last year, you're already familiar with this. But one conference platform is, you know, they're, they're, they're very familiar. Um, you will be taken to the Hopin website, and there on the right side of your screen, you'll see um, attend the event. Um, the event is free this year, mm -hmm. and uh, you can, if you wish, pay for your ticket. Um, about 10% of our attendees pay for the ticket, and we really appreciate that. It's a way to support the event and support the foundation. Mm -hmm. But the event is is free to attend if, if you wish to do so. Cool. Uh, thanks for the detail. And uh, we'll put all the links uh, for the registration in, in the description below. So uh, please do, please do uh, check out those as well. And, uh, and Rich, as you mentioned, the ApacheCon is uh, free this year. So the, uh, and it's such a huge event that requires great resources. And we, we are able to do this uh, because of uh, constant support from our sponsors. So I would like to know uh, a bit more about from yourself uh, about the sponsors for the ApacheCon. Absolutely. And sponsors do make this possible. Um, it's also, if you're interested in sponsoring, we still have sponsorship opportunities available. And it's a great way to get your name in front of the, uh, you know, one of the most important software development communities on the planet. So, you know, this is this is something that you may want to consider. Click on the sponsor link on that same website, ApacheCon.com. But here we go. Um, our top level sponsor is Google. This is the strategic sponsorship level. At the platinum level, we have Huawei, Tencent Cloud, Instacluster, and Apple. And these five sponsors, Google and these other four, are the ones that you will be seeing in the sponsored keynotes each day during the event. Mm -hmm. At the gold level, we have Didi, Dremio, Cerner, Fighter, Baidu, Red Hat, Replicated, Gradle, Ivan, 
and AWS. And these are these are uh, these are all companies that are involved in many of our project and have stepped up to support our community. So we really appreciate them. At the silver level, we have Securinix, Imply, Microsoft, SphereX, Bamboo Systems Group, DataStax, and Crafter Software. And then at the bronze level, we have Technical Arts. Um, we are out of platinum sponsor level because, like I said, each one of these gets a keynote and we have to fit those into the schedule. But we do have sponsorship opportunities available at all of these other levels if you're still interested. Super. Uh, thanks, thanks for this detail. And yeah, definitely uh, uh, a huge thanks to our sponsors to making these things uh, happen. Uh, cool. So, uh, so thank you so much, Rich. This is uh, amazing uh, uh, details you shared with us. There's a lot of uh, history about the Apache Khan, and I'm sure uh, uh, our audience who is watching this video will uh, getting a, a really good insight of Apache Khan. And uh, I'm excited like you for the Apache Khan. And thank you so much for sharing all the details. I, I, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Swapnil. I really appreciate you giving us this platform to promote our event. Cool. So uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining this interview. Uh, all the links are in the description section below. Uh, we are waiting for you to join the Apache Com. See you soon in the Apache Com. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. For more information and to register for Apache Con Home, visit ApacheCon.com.